Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, there are so many other places you could have been at today, uh, but you chose to be here to worship his family together, and, and, and you did have other options, and that's kind of how I wanted to start out with, uh, today, is talking about options in a way, uh, because there are so many options in our lives. I mean, think about all the different options you even have on a daily basis, from the time that you get up to you go to bed, all the different options that you have uh, throughout the day. There, it's just, it's one thing after another how we have so many options. I mean, think about it for a moment. You just want to sit down and watch a movie. It sounds easy enough, right? No, it's not because you got to decide, okay, am I going to watch it on Netflix? Is I'm going, am I going to watch it on Hulu? Am I going to watch it on Prime? Do I go to Disney? Uh, or any other, other hundred different streaming options that we have now? Uh, or maybe, maybe there's a sporting event that you want to watch. Now, in my house, if Notre Dame's playing, that's the only thing on in my house anyway. Uh, but that, that's it. Uh, but may, maybe you're not that guy. Uh, maybe it's not the sporting event that you're looking to. So maybe, well, do I just turn on just the TV and just take a chance and see what's on just regular TV, right? Or maybe you're old school. So I want to show of hands, actually, on this one. Who still has the VHS tapes and the VHS player? Wow, that's a lot of people, actually. Uh, do you still watch them? Absolutely, absolutely. Or maybe you're a little bit more high tech and you go to a DVD or, or even those Blu-ray. Uh, you know, how many different options now? Now, we have a, quite an assortment of VHS tapes still at our house. The, the number one is Star Wars. We have the original Star Wars VHS. Uh, but we also have tons and tons of VeggieTales <laughs> uh, that we just can't get rid of. Uh, uh, and then the DVDs and the Blu-ray discs that we have. I mean, we have a whole library of stuff and we don't even watch them anymore, but there's so many options. Because now, you don't have to go to that because you have Netflix. You have all these different streaming options that you can go to. Option after option after option. But there's one more option, you know. How about if I just go to the movie theater, you know. And that's, that's a good way out. I mean, you got to pay a little bit more. Not for the movie so much, but for the popcorn you're going to pay a whole lot for. Uh, but all the different options. All the Okay, so think about this for a moment. Now that you've decided what you're going to watch, where you're going to watch it, and how you're going to watch it, because you can watch it on any device anymore, even on your phone. You've decided what you're going to watch. So here's the real question. What am I going to eat? What am I going to, because you've got to eat something while you're watching this great movie or this sporting event or something other. So you've got to decide. Uh, and, and the choices are endless on, on what you're going to eat, but let's not muddy it up too bad. I'm going to give you one place that you can actually eat while you're watching this movie. And most of y'all, some of y'all might not like this option. I like it because this is old school for me, because this is my first job I ever had. We're just going to give you Burger King. Just Burger King. That's your option. So that seems pretty easy enough. And you're going to, you're going to get the most popular item at Burger King, which is the Whopper. Easy enough, right? I've, I've narrowed down your choices completely. Except someone actually did the math. And found out that there is 220,000 options for that Walmart. All the different, because you know Burger King, you're way right away, right? And now they change the slogan now. It's, it's, I went through that the other day, and I think it's, uh, uh, welcome Burger King, where you rule. What they're saying is, you rule, so you get to decide. You get to decide on what options you want. You get to decide on what you want on that burger. <laughs> That's a lot of options. As you can tell... We live in a world that has unlimited options. I mean, there's options for everything. Everything. And we have been programmed in our minds to think we have options for everything. Everything in life, we have options for. Options uh, with your work. Uh, you have options with your career. Options with what you want to do for the rest of your life. You have options for your home. You know, it used to be... Uh, Used to be, they, you know, really primarily one type of house, a stick built house that either a ranch style or something other, but now there's, uh, you can get them custom built to however you want. Uh, and especially in today's market, uh, where there are so many people either moving or selling their homes and going to a different option in their homes, it's, it's endless. And we just, we just hit on a food item, but think about all the different food options you have on a daily basis. Uh, even in little town of Asheboro, you have all kinds of, even in Seagrove, you have options. 
you have the, the, the Mexican food truck, you have Fresh Cuts. Hardy's ain't there no more, so that option's been taken away. Uh, you have uh, Crunchy Chicken uh, down at the store. Uh, but you still have options even in Seagrove. You have options. And then let's not even talk about the clothing options that we have. Uh, all the different styles that's out there or shoes. Have you been in a shoe store lately? All the different shoes. I remember it was just a tennis shoe or a boot. Now it's all the way from Hey Dudes and everything Crocs and everything else. All the different options. Options for shoes. And then friends. You know, the people you're around. Those are options for you. Uh, you know, who you want to be around. That. I heard it. Uh, during the football game, uh, Coach Baxter was talking about uh, how your circle of friends will change. They'll come <coughs> over about every four years. Uh, and he was talking about high school mainly, but it, it involves us too uh, because the people we hang around, it changes because we have all kinds of different options. And even when you get to religion or church, there's some people that will tell you that there's options there. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways. Uh, to God. But there's one, that's not true. There's one, there's one thing that we don't have an option about. Uh, we don't ever have an option with our relationship with Christ. That's our key part today as, as we move forward. Uh, that that uh, Christ is essential for our lives, not optional. And we need to remember that as we move through this. We need, you need to keep repeating that to yourself. That God is essential in our lives. Not optional. When we have a relationship with Christ, that relationship should guide our life, our whole life, every part of our life, not just on Sundays, not just when we feel like it, not just uh, when we're around other Christians. Uh, it should be our whole life, every part of our life. Today we're going to look at how in our Christian life, our, our Christ-like life, Christ is essential. He's essential in our lives. It's not optional. Our scripture today is going to show us how, how this essential life looks like. It's going to show us that. And it's in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. This is a, a letter that Paul wrote uh, to the Ephesian church. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Three verses today. And really it was supposed to be one verse but I just couldn't do that, just one verse, without explaining it first. And so that's where 8 and 9 comes in. But Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by work so that, you know, that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Let's pray over today's scripture. Father, we thank you for your words. Father, we thank you for, uh, for your words that point us to that essential life that we have in front of us. Those good works that are in front of us. And Father, we sit back and know that you have created us for a purpose. And we thank you for that. Now lead us in God, Father, as we look into your word. And we ask us in Christ's name. Amen. Now, the first thing that we need to do uh, is actually put these verses in context a little bit uh, with the whole of chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2 emphasizes uh, the theme of salvation. Salvation through, through, gra uh, through grace, through faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, now, first thing that Paul does in verses uh, 1 through 10, uh, Paul describes the process of that salvation uh, as a result of God's grace through faith. What he's saying here is human effort isn't enough. He's saying here that our goodness isn't enough. Those things are completely ineffective in our salvation. What he's saying here, he is our only option. Christ is the essential part of our life, our only option. The whole chapter, if you read throughout chapter 2, the whole chapter is Paul telling us, our walk as Christians, it's just not optional. It's essential. And so let's go ahead and look at the verses in detail, a little bit more detail. In verse 8, uh, for it is by grace. And we'll come back to some of these words in a minute. Uh, but it is, it is by grace you have been saved. By grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. 
It is a gift of God. And then you also got to add verse 9 into this as well. Not by works, so that no one can boast. So what is Paul saying here? I have an a equation I wanted to show you this morning. It says faith plus works. Now notice, you might see an equal sign there, but that's not an equal sign. It has a slash through it. So it says faith plus works does not equal salvation. Faith plus anything, Christ plus anything, does not equal salvation. Faith equals salvation. Christ is what equals salvation. Salvation, And we need to remember that as we move forward. Uh, we need to stop here for a moment, though, because now that we've got that equation in front of us, we need to look back at some of these words because, uh, unfortunately, some of these words, they can be kind of churchy sometimes, and, and we might know what they, they mean. Uh, or maybe this morning you're sitting there, and I've, I've read verses 8 and 9, and, and some of those words just ain't popping out to you, and you don't quite get that. So let's back up a little bit and talk about some of these words individually. The first word is grace, for it is by grace, right? That word grace, a gift from God. Think about it, grace is a gift from God that cannot be earned and it's not deserved. I don't deserve grace. I don't, but it's a gift of God and it's not earned and it's not deserved. This is spread throughout the Bible that we have in our hands. The whole Bible talks about this uh, over and over and over. And there's, there, what he's saying here is there's no other option. There's no other option for salvation but by grace. That's what he's telling us. He's telling us that that's the essential part of our salvation. And we need to remember that as we move forward here. Then we have the next word, that word saved. We just kind of talked about that a little bit. But that word saved, it's tied into that grace word uh, that we looked at. That word saved is our salvation. Uh, the word uh, the word of God that's in our hands, the scripture that's in our hands. And, and I know we have a, a Gideon speaker, and he's going to talk about that today, about the word of God in our hands and how powerful that is. Uh, it teaches us all about salvation, and we, it teaches us that it's because of the result of Jesus' death and resurrection. That's the gift of God. How does that work? How does that work? I keep it, I, I've had the opportunity to share the gospel so many times. Uh, and, and what it comes down to, and, and, and I tried to make it just as simple as I can, and, and I've heard this before, you've probably heard this over and over and over, but it's the ABCs of salvation, right? Admit that you've done wrong. Admit that you've, you've messed up in your life. What that's saying is admitting that you're a sinner, right? That's the first part. Then, then you have to go to that next letter, that B. That's, that's believing what Christ did, who Christ is, and knowing that he did die and that he did raise again, Believing in that. Now, will you understand that at first? Absolutely not. I couldn't tell you. Uh, that was a hard When I first came to Christ, that was a hard thing for me to reconcile in my mind about he died and he rose again. See, that didn't make no, I didn't come to Christ until I was on the dog way. And so it was, uh, my whole life was programmed with that, that when you die, you're dead. Uh, and that's all I knew. And so I had, you know, I had to come to the terms, yes, I believed it. I didn't understand it at first. So I'm telling you this morning, it's okay if you don't understand that. It's okay. Uh, but believing that, that that he is who he is and what he did for you. And then that C letter. Confess that you want him in your life. It's pretty much what that, that C comes down to. Confessing him that you want him in your life and you want to be more Christ-like in your life. Maybe you still don't get that this morning. Like I said a moment ago, it's okay if you don't get that. Maybe today you just don't have a relationship with, with Christ because you've never accepted God's calling in your life to come forward, the, the, to come to salvation. And that's okay, but, but I encourage you. I know, I know this is kind of weird me saying this right now because this is, the end, this is normally at the end of the sermon, but I'm going to put it in right here because this next part I want to make sure that we get. But if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, if you've never uh, uh, accepted that calling in your life, Hey, I encourage you, before you leave today, Pastor Bill is back there. I'm here. Hey, come to us. We would love the opportunity to sit down and talk to you sometime, uh, even today, and, and explain that to you. Uh, even more detail than I'm trying to do uh, up here. I know I can't go into great detail up here. I'd never get done. And we have a Gideon speaker today, and I want to give him time. Uh, and then we have the pastor appreciation plan, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. But if you've never accepted Christ as your speaker, hey, today can be that day. 
What a better day than today. Talk to Pastor Bill. Talk to myself. Uh, uh, we would love to talk to you about that. Uh, but as we move forward, this is, this is where I was wanting to go originally. I felt like we had to get that first part out of the way, though, uh, so you can understand this a little bit better. Uh, there's the, the next verse that I wanted to uh, go to, and it ties into the last word that we need to look at, that word faith, faith, having faith, having faith, uh, believing that God does exist, believing that God does love you, that God sent his son to save you. That's having faith. Having faith also <coughs> means we make the decision to trust in him completely in every part of our life. Even the, the minute places that, that we want to hide up, letting God have control over those areas as well. And we put our whole lives in his hands. See, it's not optional. And we're going to see that in verse 10. That's not optional. That's <coughs> essential. The best way to describe that, uh, about that word faith, is in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, uh, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for. It's Christ, Right? And assurance about what we do not see. That's Christ. Having faith in Christ is what he's telling us there. And then after we say that, before we get to verse 10, verse 8 and 9 again. With everything I talk about, with grace, with saved, uh, with faith, and, and those words. Let me read 8 and 9 again to you. For it is by grace, the gift of God, you have been saved through faith. And it is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. Paul tells us here that it's not about what you can do. It's about what he did. It's about what he did for us. We can never do enough. We can never say enough. We can never do enough good. We can never do enough works to cause our own salvation. We just can't. We can't do that. And then we see that in verse 10. In verse 10, uh, as Christians, this is, this is that op not optional but essential part. And i got to say that before I read the verse. Because I want you to think that, that, that this is essential, not optional, as I read through this verse. For we are God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. See verse 10 starts out by saying we are his handiwork. And that just gets me excited knowing that God had everything to do with me. I'm his handiwork. Now some translations would say that, he's, that this, is, uh, uh, this is God's workmanship. When Paul used uh, the word handiwork, though, he would have been thinking about some, something a person makes with his hands. It's me. He made me with his hands. And then the next word in, in verse 10 is created. His, God's work, handiwork, created. Created in Jesus Christ. God recreates us. Like I was, and again, I was, I, I was saved as an adult. I came to Christ as an adult. So I had a lot of ugliness in my life. I had a lot of bad stuff in my life. And to know that God has recreated me, man, that, that just gives me cold chills thinking about that. God recreates us. He makes us new. Paul writes again in 2 Corinthians verse uh, 5, 17, uh, that the person who is in Christ is a new creation. Verse 17 in 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The new creation is up front now. The old is gone. The new is here. Right here. That's awesome to hear that. And then Paul is saying to the Ephesian church here, you are God's workmanship. Y'all all are God's workmanship. His handiwork. Created by Christ Jesus. And you have a purpose. If you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior today, you have a purpose. You have a purpose in life. And then that is next, the next four words kind of tells you what that is. 
to do good works. To do good works. That's why you've been created. So let's look at that. Let's look at that equation again. And we're going to add a little something other to that equation. Uh, faith plus works does not equal salvation. We know that. We got past that a little while ago. Faith or Christ, however you want to say that, equals salvation. Good works is a byproduct. We don't have to have the works in order to get salvation, but those good works is a byproduct of that salvation. And then now look at the end of verse 10, which God prepared in advance for us to do. He already knew. He knew before we were even a thought of what we were going to be doing. He knew this in advance. Paul is telling us we should walk and live in God's will. A will that has already been established, that he's already set aside. He's already, uh, he, he has you already planned out what you're going to be doing. God has prepared good works for us to do. Everything we do, we should do in and through <coughs> his will. Good work. Everything I do at work should be through his will, in his will. Our families, is through Him, in Him. we got to think about that for our whole life, in our homes, with our children, with our loved ones, with our family, with our friends, everything. Through Him, by Him. We come to worship. We're here to worship with Him. It's by Him, through Him. It's essential. Our giving, our tithing, it's part of the plan. It's part of being in his will. In ministry, it has to be. It's part of his plan. Hey, the whole Halloween festival that we're having over at the elementary school that Sheila is put together diligently, hey, it's part of his plan. It's not an option. It's essential for us to be in our communities. That's why it's so important. That's why we ask for candy. That's why we ask for volunteers. That's why we, as a church, get behind this and move forward because it's God's will. It's his plan. And even some of our hobbies is his plan. I never thought about that until this past week, that, that me being on the ball field as a coach at Southwest High School, that's part of God's plan in my life. How do I know that? Because I get to go to school every day in the afternoon and pour, in, pour into these young adults and impact them in their lives. Yeah, I'm there to coach, absolutely. But my will, my plan that God has prepared in advance for me is to make an impact on those young adults. So everything that we do, no matter where you are, no matter where you find yourself, part of God's plan Part of his will in your life. We got to see that. We got to know that. It's essential. It's not optional. It's not optional. As we finish, a few things for you to think about. A few, a few things to think about as you walk out the door today. And we're going to go down there. The Gideon's going to come first. And we're going to go down there. We're going to eat. We're going to have a good time. But as you leave out today, as you pull away from the church today, a few things. Think about it. You are shaped to serve. Each and every one of us are shaped to serve. And the cool part about this is he shaped you. Not Pastor Bill. Not Tracy. He has shaped you to serve. You are his handiwork. His workmanship. And you are different from anyone else that you're sitting around. He shaped you with his own hand. It's a personal thing. It's personal to God. It should be personal to us at that point. You are his handiwork. And then, now that we know that he has shaped us, each of his children is unique. Every one of us is unique. And we serve in a very unique way. Every one of us is going to be different. So my question for you, knowing those two things, how has God shaped you? 
See, that's a question between you and God, not you and Beto or you and Tracy. That's a question for you and God. How does he shape you to serve? What plan does he have in your life? That's a tough question sometimes. That's not a question that you can just answer real quickly. Some of us may, but most of us, if you're like me, it takes some deciphering for me to find that out. But how has he shaped you? And then think about the good works that he's prepared for you to do. Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to do the good works that he's prepared in advance for you? Remember, he had prepared this in advance. He just didn't come up on October 20th on a Sunday morning and just threw something in your lap all of a sudden. No, he's prepared for you. Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to speak?